Algo stable coins do have, uh, I would say in general, do have higher risk than a fiat backed back stable coin, a different type of risk, but much clearer. Um, I got to be a little bit careful. Uh, number one, win exchange. If I say a certain few projects are going to do well, then it mm -hmm. may impact the price. So we try. I try not to comment on specific industry players. Um, you guys were asking about FTX, so you know, made a few comments, and they're you know, then exchange. So, um, and then um, uh, I also, and also, it's a bit too early to tell. Um, mm -hmm. So, right now, I don't think uh, all the all the. Uh, um, I think uh, I don't think I don't think we're, we're we're kind of on our way to a bull market. It's not 100% clear to me that's the case or not. So I think we have to wait and see how the market reacts. Uh, many of the deal that's going on to net now may or may not work out. Uh, so we still have to see. So it's, and also it's very difficult to predict uh, which, which company is gonna do well or not well. Uh, I actually don't follow the other projects that closely myself. I'm pretty busy running Binance. Um, um, and so, uh, to know that you really have to know the intricate details, and I don't, I don't have those kind of um, detailed information. Sure, sure. And there's no conflict. Um, just because uh, almost all assets we hold are not stable, <laughs> including stable coins. So just because stable coins is not that stable, um, it, it's, well, when I say that, I mean really benchmarking against purchasing power. So even if you look at fiat currencies, most of the time the purchasing power go down over the years. So uh, nothing is absolutely stable when you benchmark against something else. Um, the most, uh, I think the most logical thing to benchmark against is purchasing power, not some other currency. So, uh, and so far if you benchmark against purchasing power, Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, some of the top crypt cryptocurrencies purchasing power have been increasing over the years significantly. So, uh, and back to stable coins that we, so, Volatility is not a problem for us. So back to mm -hmm. the stable coins that we hold, um, we don't have a we don't have a scientific way of managing that. To be very frank, we just you know our revenue comes into many different almost all the different coins that we we support. Um, but most of them we just hold them, and uh, we just happen to have you know most people do like to trade against a stable coin pair. So when you trade Bitcoin in BTC versus you know a, a BUSD, the number makes sense. The number is like twenty one thousand. Um, it's not 0 0.001 something, so the number is much easier to understand. So uh, we do have more fee, uh, stable coin trading pairs, which basically gives us more stable coin income. So and uh, and it's okay. Like I think so for me, like anywhere between 10% to 40% of stable coin is is probably okay. Um, we don't have to. We, we're not going to be perfectly adjusting the treasury management. We don't trade. We don't trade. We don't sell. We don't buy and sell. We don't try to predict markets. So a very natural thing is let's just accept everything that people pay uh, pay for pay for fees with, and that actually usually works out quite fine. So we're actually very well hedged against volatilities in Bitcoin, and when Bitcoin's going up, we benefit. So it's actually a pretty interesting. Like it's a very simple, uh, no work strategy. It works really well. Uh, so um, a couple of things. I think um, yes, I was uh, I was disappointed with the way how it was handled uh, and the. I, I, the speed of response, the frequency of communication with the community, and the op speed of operational response to handle the problems, I think was quite weak. So being pretty public about it, mm -hmm. um, it's one of our portfolio invested companies. So um, uh, and um, it's uh, uh, so we're, so we we're, we're kind of part of it in, in a way. Um, and uh, so that's that. But just because one project failed doesn't mean that's. I don't think it will mean algorithm algo stable coins will never work. Mm -hmm. um, but algo stable coins do have, uh, I would say, in general, do have higher risk than a fiat backed back stable coin. Different type of risk, but much clearer. When you benchmark one, when you use one asset for collateral to uh, to pack to pack a different asset, there's always going to be volatility. So um, um, so that risk is much higher in algo algo stable coins. This is not to say that fiat backed stable coins have no risks. Um, there are many risks there too. Um, you know, uh, banks can freeze your money. Uh, this happened to USDT. They freeze like six hundred million dollars of USDT's money at some point. Um, that caused a lot of issues, and they luckily they recover from that. So, uh, and then there are different levels of uh, uh, fiat backed uh, for different fiat backed stablecoins. Some use treasury bills. Some use commercial paper. 
some use uh, uh, BUSD uses a very high percentage of um, actual cash uh, in mm -hmm. the bank. So different 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 approaches. Not to and not to say that anyone is particularly. They just have different risk profiles. So I think as users uh, or as industry players, as regulators, we need to educate the masses. So we need to increase education on the users. Uh, we should be teaching people about different risks, about stable coins, etc. In school, uh, right now, I don't think any school have courses cover this. So, um, um, so, uh, and then as users, they need to they need to understand the different risks and decide what's good for them and what's the right portfolio for them. So, um, I think that that education part is really important. So, long story, but I think just because of one failed project doesn't mean the whole thing is bad. But that one project did shine a pretty big light on some of the deficiencies or some of the high risks in this area, which mm -hmm. is very important for us. To... Yeah. So uh, yes, we did capitulate, <laughs> and uh, so um, uh, again, so this in this world. Uh, so for example, when you talk about there's so many words that have somewhat ambiguous meanings, meanings, but people get used to them and they they will think a certain way. Uh, for example, a company. A company is just a group of guys who work together with a, you know, a certain agreed structure, different uh, agreements on compensation, etc. Headquarter. What does that mean? Does that mean the office uh, where the senior management are? Does it mean the company registration, uh, where you pay taxes? All of this other, th all of these things. Um, so, uh, and when we started. You know, five years ago, there was very little uh, uh, regulatory frameworks, and in fact, most of the regulators we spoke to, they clearly just said, like three, four years ago, when when we spoke to Singapore AMS, they clearly told us we don't regulate this industry. Um, you know, you're off. Um, we're, we're not involved. So back in those days, you know, we were embracing the decentralized philosophy, and it worked really well for us. We can hire talent globally, and people can people don't have don't have to waste time traveling, stuck in commuting. Um, they can work, and we run a 24 by 7 exchange. And having people globally in different time zones covers that. We always have somebody uh, 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 who's awake and who's looking at um, uh, who's looking at the community, who's looking at the systems. That worked beautifully. But then, as you as you, as you know, when you talk with regulators, the regulators first question is, where's your headquarters? Where's your office? Where's your local staff? And that makes sense. Look, they 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 come from this background that you know over the last seventy, ninety, a hundred years they formed this this uh, this this, this um, customs or this the the uh, uh, this rules. So they expect you have a local M A O R O, your local com compliance. Your uh, you have a local he building that people can go and complain. Um, you have to have local people who are legal representatives. And we said, look, if we want, if we want this, what's the best way forward for this industry for us to help this industry grow as a centralized business, as a centralized exchange? The best way is to give them give them that structure. So we set up local offices, local entities, hire local compliance, legal, this whole this, this whole structure. Um, but today we still have a large number of people, you know, engineers, customer support that works remotely in a distributed fashion, and so we have a hybrid of those two. And when people ask about our headquarters, offices, etc., we have now we now have offices in Dubai, Bahrain, Abu Dhabi, France, Paris, Italy. So we have we have the structure set up now. So now we 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 satisfy both sides. It's actually fantastic. What is the answer now? If if they say where's the headquarters, is there one answer? Uh, yeah, so. Well, if it's you know if if it's a Fran if, if we're in France, we say look right right here in Paris, our building is right beside the right right beside the, the traditional Bourse building. Um, and if it's if we're talking about the Middle East, we have two: is Bahrain and Dubai, or well, and Abu Dhabi. So yeah, so now now people can go to the nearest office, and if they have an issue, they can find us, they can talk to us. Uh, so it's it works now. Yeah. So w I think um, nine months ago, uh, when I first went to Dubai, um, we had about three people there. Today, I think we're coming up to six hundred people there. So we wow. we brought a few, we brought a couple couple hundred people there, and then we hired the rest. Mm -hmm. um, so, and Dubai is a very nice place to live. Uh, it's very modern, very established, extremely safe. It's probably one of the safest cities in the world. Um, it's got all the international restaurants, bars, nice life, ni nice lifestyle culture. Um, and what else? And it's also very, it's also a very good time zone. It's in the mm -hmm. middle of, you know, it overlaps with America, Europe, Asia time zones. Uh, easy to fly everywhere too. So um, and on top of that, the government is very pro innovation. Mm -hmm. um, they understand they cannot rely on oil forever. They need to develop new fintech industries. Um, they're very pro innovation, pro 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 uh, pro blockchain. So having all of that is fantastic. So 
uh, we just grown the headcount there very quickly. Um, so, and we'll continue to invest very heavily ourselves. We also, last time when I, uh, nine months ago when I was there, there was like maybe two or three crypto companies there and they're, they're not that big. And then today there's probably a couple hundred crypto companies there. And, and we organized a, a blockchain conference, 5,000 mm -hmm. people attended. Um, so um, it's, it's just a fantastic place. So we'll continue to, yeah, so Dubai is great and we'll continue to invest heavily there. Same with our other locations, Bahrain, Paris, uh, Italy, etc. So we, we, wherever we get licenses, wherever we have a base, we, uh, we, we double down, we invest, and we also want to help to attract the ecosystem there. And we're quite good at that because we have a bit of a magnet effect in, in the industry. Um, I can go into that if you guys. Uh, no, I don't think U.S. Uh, I don't think U.S. is behind. Um, so different countries are forward in different aspects. Um, Binance U.S., um, the U.S. entity in Binance, uh, or for Binance, um, they got four state. They got four new state licenses in the last six months. So they're getting new licenses in the U.S. So I forgot to mention that because I usually we kind of cover that, cover them out mentally. Um, mm -hmm. and, and legally. So, uh, include Louisiana, um, some of the bigger states actually. So some of the states that are, that takes longer to get licenses. Binance US has like 45, 46 state licenses in, in the US. So, uh, and no, and they're still getting the last few remaining. I think they're still missing two or three, uh, licenses. So they're, they're, they're getting new licenses and that's a, that's a very strong stamp of, appro of approval and also embracing regulations. And, um, their the number of users are growing. It's, it's a very healthy business. Um, so uh, Binance US is doing fantastic. Um, and uh, we had a little bit of issue last year with some personnel issues. We changed some personnel, but now it's stabilized. It's fantastic. So uh, so yeah. So it's not like we're neglecting the US. I sp I don't spend much time on, on the US myself. But you know, Binance US does have very uh, good presence there. And speaking of the regulations in the US, um, US has actually one of the best banking supports for cryptocurrency exchanges anywhere in the world. So in the US, um, cryptocurrency exchanges like Binance US, Coinbase can deduct from users' bank accounts automatically every month, uh, giving the users one-time approval through the ACH protocol. Um, I think Korea has something similar. Uh, most other countries don't have this level of integration for banks, for banking support to cryptocurrency exchanges. So I think that's a fantastic thing. US is more strict uh, on, you know, yield generating products, interest generating products, um, uh, futures, etc. So th they're, they're more restrictive on those, those type of product offerings. So different countries a little bit different. Um, it's not to say one is more uh, like there's no like it's not clear one place is globally better or every, better in every aspect uh, than, than, than other places. So and U.S. is also quite interesting given that you know uh, there's a lot of focus on U.S. U.S. is very divided, right? So U.S. has so many different, um, so many different political parties, so many different agencies, etc. And even in the Senate, you can see that some senators are very pro-innovation. Some senators want to like let's protect the U.S. dollar to to the maximum to, for the longest time, for as long as we can, and then not have the next thing. Uh, or maybe they don't realize that that would not have the next thing. So, but you know, this debate um, is a democracy. So um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting to see different. Uh, so I wouldn't say U.S. is completely behind. U.S. is you know strict on a few areas, but they're also advancing in a few other areas.